And good morning. It's Saturday, the 9th of August, 2014. A few little issues with um, with switching on today. At like a minute, a minute before it was due to start, everything just suddenly went off and Chrome says I was being signed out because it had lost my password. You know, we've been sitting here since 11 o'clock. The picture was on, the music was flowing, everything was working, and then suddenly at the last minute it all disappears. And of course, you're all logged on to that that video right that one dies so i've got to start another one so everyone's like oh no we can't see it. i'm so sorry darlings i'm so sorry it wasn't my fault nothing i did i didn't touch about it's been a few days actually it's been a couple of days of, of sheer awfulness it really has and i'm just about up to here and then and then suddenly a letter comes through the letterbox and i've rushed downstairs okay Here's the show today. It's there on my computer. But suddenly, we're going to start with this. OK, so what does the letter say? Now, you may remember a couple of months ago, I got a a Red Route ticket, OK, from Transport for London, parking in a Red Route box at just before 10pm at night from Transport for London in Clapham. Now, I know that there are no restrictions at that time. And I sent the letter back, and sure enough, it was quashed, and that was the end of it. Right? So, a couple of weeks ago, I had another one parked in exactly the same position. Right? So, this is um, a red route box. You're not allowed to park in it between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. After that, you can park in it. Right. I parked in the same place again and the same people have sent me a letter or sent me a letter uh, marked uh, and and operated by the same camera operator. Now, it, it gives you a little little number there. I don't know if I've got that here. That doesn't actually I haven't actually got that bit here. But nevertheless, it was the same camera operator. They don't give you the name. They only give you this number. And this time it says this. Thank you for your rep. This has just dropped through my door a few minutes ago. Thank you for your reputation representation received on the 28th of July. Transport for London has considered your reputation, um, but does not accept you have established grounds for suitable reasons for the penalty charge to be cancelled. This letter is issued as a formal notice of rejection of your representation. We have decided to reject your representation for the following reasons. We issued the PCM because your vehicle was stationary on the 7th of July at 21.53.28 until 21.55.17. So for a start, that's two bloody minutes. But that's neither here nor there. Right? It's neither here nor there. So they've observed it for two minutes. The signage in place indicates no stopping at any time except taxi cabs between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Being stationary within, within a red route taxi bay without holding a taxi line constitutes a controversial. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure this is a public parking space, not taxis. So, fortunately, I'm off tonight, right? I'm going to have to go down to bloody Clapham. I'm going to have to go to... Let me see this. Let me have a look. Uh, I'm going to have to go down to Clapham and check the sign and take a picture of it and send it back to them. Well, I can't now. I can't. What I have to do now, apparently, is fill out another form. Right? Or send 65 bloody quid. I've got to send, fill in another form, your right to appeal. I mean, this is all time, this is. I ain't got time to piss ass about with this stuff. I'm really pissed off. Really pissed off today. Can you tell? And I'm not someone that gets pissed off easily. I'm sick to death of things going wrong in the last couple of days. I am. So that's one thing. You know. Oh, by the way, by the way, boys and girls, don't touch anyone at the moment. Ebola virus. Do not touch anyone. Apparently, it's spread through fluids and touching people. Do not touch anyone, especially people that work in the public area. Ben, for example, 
Mr. Karaoke Man, don't touch any of your clients, Ben, for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's frightening, isn't it, really? What I don't stand, understand about, like, when we have these health scares. Now, you remember we had, we had the bird flu a few years ago. That was all coming out of, I think it was China, right? Um, we've now got uh, Ebola, which is uh, sounds almost rampant in, um, is it Liberia? And Nigeria has, has now picked it up and somewhere else. And they're all sort of slowly spreading out. Now, the reason these things travel around the world so easily now, for example, colds, flu, viruses, you know, things like that, that are bad. And don't forget, flu kills people as well. Flu absolutely kills people as well, doesn't it? Um, I don't understand when you've got something serious like that bird flu and like Ebola virus, why don't they close the country down? Why on earth? Have we still got planes and people flying in and out of these places? Now, you could argue the fact, well, if you close the country down, then people wouldn't be able to get in to um, help deal with the situation. Now, that's fine. There's no problem if you want to go in, fine. You know, if you are one of those wonderful people who go out helping people, you know, maybe you're a doctor or something like that or a nurse or a scientist and you're happy to take that risk. Then, number one, I thank you for taking that risk. OK, but number two, you're going to be locked in there until you until you get rid of it. I don't understand why it is <clears throat> when there's something as serious as that. Why do they keep the country open and the planes and boats continue to go in and out? It's all about the money, isn't it? That's why it's all about there must be some money involved there somewhere. It's just madness. Here we have an opportunity to keep that virus in that country and not let it get out any further. Well, I say that. I mean, there's one bloke who's in Spain now, isn't he? He's been treated for it. Uh, a couple of people who have gone to the state, gone back to the states for treatment, and it's all very well. So, oh no, 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 it's quite safe. It's quite safe. They're all isolated in plastic bags and things like that. Things can go wrong. Now. One of the people in the States, I think I'm right in saying, is either a nurse or a doctor who was assisting people, you know, treating them for this. Now, my guess is he, he must have had the mask on and the gloves and everything else, yet he's got it. So he must have slipped up somewhere. And that's how this sort of thing can get out. I don't know what you think of that idea, but it just makes common sense to me. Why don't you just close the area, or in this case, the country down, nothing in and nothing out until it's sorted? We don't want this travelling all over the world, do we? How easy is it for someone to... I mean, I'm, I'm not quite actually quite sure how long it takes to show itself uh, in in the... Uh, how can I put it? Like, for example, I, I could have measles now and it might not be showing itself on my face. Do you see what I mean? I'm not quite sure how long Ebola takes to show itself. But, you know, you, you, you could be carrying it, I suppose, and then jump on a plane, perhaps come over to the UK and straight out and then pop in a couple of bars for a few drinks at night. You know, hundreds of people in these bars. Oh, hello, my name's so-and-so, shake your hand. And then a day later, you, you fall down dead with it and you've infected all those other people. Probably without realising it. Isn't it common sense to just shut down a country when it comes to something like that? I'd like your thoughts on that one today, boys and girls. Uh, I have Skype. My Skype username is Chris Reardon. If you've got Skype, you can call in Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. That's my Skype username. There's a phone in number as well. If you're with us live and it's coming up to 16 minutes past uh, midday on Saturday the 9th. 9th of August 2014, then you are indeed with us live. That's UK time. You can call in with a local London number 020 8133 6358. 020 
01336358. I'd like to know your um, opinions on that, all right? Uh, good morning to Danny. Danny, who's in sunny Wales. Hello, Danny. Nice to hear from you today. Um, you want me to try and call you in a second, so I will try and do that. Good morning to Terry H. Good morning, Terry H. A Big Brother fan. A, <laughs> a big... Oh, I feel a bit happier now. A Big Brother fan. Good morning, Terry H. Um... Ben had trouble seeing us this morning, but he's with us now as well. Good morning to Gary, who says, Hi, Chris, I thought you'd blown the place up. You said the show was over before it was it began. Yeah, there was a little trouble with the um, uh, the, 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 the Chrome sign-in thing today. Suddenly it said it didn't recognise me. I don't know what went wrong. Uh, good morning to Marge, who sent in a little video of her uh, dilly uh, departed mother's garden today, which Marge I've been able to pull down off the internet, and I'll be showing that hopefully uh, within the show today. Uh, Marge says, um, your sound is like an auditorium. It's OK, but it's like you're talking from a stage. Is it? But you're talking from a stage and at the back of an auditorium. Uh, come on, Chris, say hello to us before you stop griping. I agree on the Ebola. They brought over a doctor back from the States. What's up with that? Well, it just it just seems completely mad to, you know, to leave the doors open of... Um, it's just ridiculous to leave the doors open and for people to come in all the time. Uh, good morning to Wendy, who says, yes, so you can tell you're pissed off. I'm hiding under the table. I'm not so bad now, Wendy. I'm just I'm just angry I'm that I've been sent this letter. And it's all time. It's all time dealing with this crap. Chris Reardon. Who's calling in on line one? Chris Reardon. Good morning. Chris Reardon. I'm so excited to talk to you. Chris Reardon, my best friend. Oh, uh, what do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? I'm watching your show. Well, it's unusual. I've come, to, I've come to give you relevant information, dear. What relevant information have you got? The incubation period for Ebola is 21 days. 21 days? So, in 21 days, if somebody comes out of that country, imagine the amount of people. I said from the beginning they should have closed the countries down. Do you know why they won't close the countries down? Would you like that relevant information Money. As well? It's got to be money. It, it, it comes down to there's a, there's a, there's a mineral or a, a product that is produced only in those countries that goes into remote controls and mobile phones. It's like, um, I can't think like of the a name Is it. it a rare metal? Uh, is it a rare metal? To, it's, yeah, it's a type of metal, uh, like a, type, a compound yeah. that goes into mobile phones and things. And that's why they won't close it down, because of the amount of money that the companies will lose. And that's what it comes down to. You're exactly right, it comes down to money. I said from the beginning, close it down. If it spreads to Nigeria, it won't be too long till it's in, it, till it's in, the, in, in, the, in the more eastern, eastern side of uh, places like Kenya... Somalia, you know, and it will. And, and do you know what the do you know what the the, the, the fatality rate is? Go, uh, is oh, yeah, I know rate? that it's not ninety five percent, isn't it? Ninety percent. Yeah. There is a ninety percent fatality rate, and the way that it's going, the World Health Organization, who have already said that they cannot deal with this, they're already saying that they cannot deal with this outbreak. They need to close the countries down, but they won't. They won't because it's all to do with money. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Money. Absolutely it ridiculous. But even worse than that, dear, I can't believe that they turned it, turned it down. You are going to have to drive to Clapham. You're going to have to check, dear. I know, I'm going to have to drive to Clapham and take a photo. I'm positive. Now, I, I, you, you probably know know the space. We're going back here, boys and girls, to the, uh, the parking ticket that I've had here. Yeah. Um... Uh, the parking space is the long one that starts yep. halfway through McDonald's and goes all the way back to the Nationwide Building Society. That's correct. I'm sure that is... I've got a picture of it here. Can you see your screen or have you had to log off that? No, 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 no. I, I, I can see you, but I think you're running like a second. The thing is, they change things without telling people. They put these things in to bamboozle you Do you think so that's that, what it is? these things happen if I was you I would go and check I'm going to or, go down there today I'm going to go down there tonight there, you know people that work there I Get do get them to go out and do a FaceTime with you to have a look <sighs> that would save that would save you the two hour drive yes think about it yeah it is it is well no I'm going to go down there I need to be sure myself yeah I'm going to go down there and uh, take some photos and send them off isn't this outrageous yeah. Outrageous. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've parked there all for... This, all do you this, know where I've parked this, there for? 11 years I've parked in that same spot. I know, spot. darling. I know. I know for the pittance that you earn. 
But, uh, you know, I must say, I must say, the past couple of days have not been that bad, dear. For one, you fixed my bike for me. Are you coming to collect that later? For two, you achieved something at one of your at one of your slum landlord houses. Slum? What do you mean, slum landlord? You're a slum landlord. Dear. I'm not a slum landlord. My place oh. is very respectable. How dare you? <laughs> you are. You're like one of those slum landlords, dear. Need a new boiler? Buy a blanket. That, that's you, dear. That is not me at all. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Things are fixed yesterday. That's why we had to pay out so much money. Let me tell you, boys and girls, uh, that house that I told you they were dirty, well, I've had to spend about three and a half bloody grand on it. New windows, decorating from top to bottom, a That's new what fridge. I mean, a What's the other thing? What was the other it thing? Was There's something else there. It was a slum. That's why you had to spend so much money on it, dear. Something oh, falling down. And some, and some electrical work, because they put up in the bedroom one of those awful uh, bulb-cum-fan-type <laughs> things. Oh, just dread. You see this sort of thing in India. Do you know what I mean? Hanging, hanging around, going round and round on the ceiling. Just awful, awful. Oh, and that it didn't finish there, Ron. So I got home with that fan, just ready to chuck it in the thing, and then I dropped it on the grass. Glass <laughs> everywhere. Oh. On and on and on went the problems last night. Yesterday. Well, I'm glad that I'm not seeing you today, dear. I'm very glad I'm not seeing you today. And that's, that's why I, I thought you were coming to collect you your bike. Last night. You didn't stay last night because you was in a foul mood and you didn't want to upset me. Bless your little cotton. What? Stuff, dear. Last night, when you came here to watch a video, dear. Oh, the, the film was boring. Legoland, whatever it was. Yeah. Lego film. We could, we could have found something else, but you went because you were in such a bad mood and you didn't want to take it out on myself and Andy. I thought that was very, very magnanimous of you. Yeah, full Very of it, magnanimous. Really Do you know that word, Ma- magnanimous? Do you know uh? that word? Do you know that word? What? Magnanimous. What's Do you know mean? what it means? No, I've no idea what it For means. For the other three people that are listening to the show... Three? The... Where'd you get three yeah. from? There's eight. Eight million. No, eight. Just eight. Not eight million, eight. Just eight, dear. Are you, um... Just a minute. Am I gorgeous? I don't know. Ask the viewers. Is, um... Is, is, is my... Is, is, is that lovely young lad... What's his name? Um... Well, no, it's a bit early for him, isn't it? I sent you some pictures of nice, nice people who liked you last night from that programme, BBC programme, Scrapping or Scrappage or something like that. Oh, have you, have that you seen was, that? Yeah, that was very good. I was very impressed with that. I was very impressed with that. Who's that, who's that young lad that likes me? What's his name? Brandon. Brandon. Ask Brandon. Brandon will tell you whether I'm, whether I'm hot or not. Well, you're not. Oh, I think Brandon will, 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 uh, will differ with you on that one, darling. Have you got anything more interesting to say? Well, no, I was just ringing up with the figures and... and, and are, you um, coming, are you coming for your bike later or what? Um, um, I need to go into town to have my beard trimmed and then me and Andy have got, have got a couple of things to do. So, yes, we very well may pop in because Andy time, could drive my car back. What time are um, you having your beard trimmed because I want my hair cut? Uh, probably in about an hour and a half time. So we could actually pick you up. What, two o'clock? Uh, two o'clock. Oh, that'll do. Right. Two o'clock it is then. Two o'clock, yes. Two o'clock. It's very nice to speak to you, dear. Please be in a good mood when I pick you up. OK, see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, viewers. Thank you for listening to me. Bye-bye. And we will be doing a duo <laughs> show very soon about our trip. Bye. To Andy's trip to... Oh, uh... go away. Of course, that was enough of that, dear. And good morning. Who's on line two? Good morning, Chris. It's Danny. Oh, over to Wales and Danny. Good morning, Wales. Well... I've got a very, very big update. And I'm in England now. Can I hear myself? Can you not hear me? Uh, I can hear myself. Have you got another radio on or something? Oh, look, I'm playing you back, so I should... should Oh, yeah, you've got to stop that. Yeah, stop that and, um, yeah. Because that won't work. I'll meet you. Can you hear me now? Eh? Yes? Oh, I'm, I'm just being told off by a viewer. Stop chewing the skin on your thumb. It's disgusting. <laughs> do you do that, Danny? Say again, sorry? Do you cut... Do you, I just got a message from Wendy, one of our regular viewers, who said, stop chewing the skin off your thumb. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trish, that's not very professional. On sorry, the radio I, and, uh, <laughs> I, and on, uh, I do and actually, live as well. I do actually try not to blow my nose or do anything like that when I'm doing a show. <laughs> well, like I said, uh, 
I've moved to England now. Where are you now, then? I'm in Chester. Chester? Is that north? Where they film Hollyoaks. Northwest, is it? Yeah, northwest England, yeah. Oh, OK. Why have you done that, then? Have you got a job here? Uh, no, well... But, well, uh, there's quite a there's quite a there's quite a lot happened since uh, we've last spoke. Oh yeah, please do. Let me tell um, you. Um, uh, just uh, Danny has been uh, with the show. Oh, few years, haven't you? Really, a few years. Yeah. yeah. So I've been a I've been an avid viewer, shall we say? And he uh, he was living in Wales, and he worked at a holiday place for a while, didn't you? A holiday camp. Haven. Yeah, Haven holidays. You liked yeah. that, though, didn't you? I did, I did. I love it. I love it. But uh, but uh, we 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 uh, shall not mention that you did not come to see me, even though you promised to. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you were, are you not there anymore in a holiday camp? Are you in Butlins now? No, I'm not in. But I'm not famous anymore. You're not famous anymore. Well, you are. Of course, you are. <laughs> I'm famous on the Chris Reardon show. Yes. But anyway, um, I just thought I'd let uh, let you know an update on my life because that's generally what I call up for. That's what we like to hear about people's lives on here. Uh, well, I've updated. I've lived. Well, I've moved to England, but I still work in Wales. And since we last spoke, why did you I've, move to uh, Eng- why did you move to England then? If you're still working in Wales, because um, it's a it's a release from my uh, grandparents, shall we say? Oh, well, you're not getting on there then. No, it's just the fact that I'm uh, getting on a bit now, shall we say, under thirty. Well, you're still under 30, I'm, aren't you? I'm still under 30. I'm 25. I'm oh. 26 this year, so... Uh, huh. I'm a lot younger than you, Chris. Right. <laughs> so what are you working as now in Wales? I'm a resident DJ in a, in a, in a club now. Oh, right, OK. And how's that going, like, all right? Do you, how many nights do you do there? I do five nights, like you advised me to. Good, yes. And... Um, I'm uh, hoping that you'd uh, come up and see me. And what, what's, the, what's the name of the club? Let's have a look at it. It's in Wrexham. Right. Which is in Wales. What's it called? Penny Black. Honey? Penny Black. How do you spell that? P E W M Y. P Penny, oh, Penny Black, OK. As in the stamp. Yes. Oh, hang on a minute. Penny Black, Penny... Uh... Yes, let's have a and look at that. And then we haven't got a website. Yeah. But we're on Facebook. Pennybackclub.co.uk, is that it? No, we're not on Facebook. We're not. We haven't got a website. Oh, right. Okay, Facebook. sorry. Are you on the Facebook, are you? We're on, we're on the it. Facebook. Penny Black. Leatherhead? No? No, Wrexham. Wrexham. Let's have a little look at that. It might come up on Facebook as Penny Black Lake. Uh, W-R-E-X-H-A-M, is it? Yeah. Another dead hero at Penny Black. Was that it? it if you search... If no, you I'll, have, I'll, have a banner, look, I'll have a look when you've gone, I think. Um, yeah. If you put in your search banner on Facebook, Penny Black Late... If I do what? If you put in your search banner, yeah. Penny Black Late... L-A-T-E? Yeah, Penny Black Late. OK, I've got it now. This. Oh, yes. There's a picture of a lady with, like, silvery lipstick and, and, and headphones. Is that, is that you, is it? That lady is Alexandra Burke, off of the X Factor. Oh, is it? Oh, yes, Alexandra Burke. Oh, she's all right. Now, who was the other girl? She looks a bit like her. Leona Lewis. See, I couldn't stand Leona Lewis. I thought she just screamed the songs. Yeah, she does. She she kind of warbles, shall we say. Yeah, I thought so. Now, you say on your message here, hope you're not a conservative. Now, why is that then? Um, just purely because of what's been going on over the uh, over the last few months with uh, David Cameron and his uh, little friends, shall we say. Go on. Um, because obviously I was brought up in Wrexham. Yes. Um, which is a very, very, very Labour town. Um, and the council have always been a Labour town. Right, yes. Um, I don't like David Cameron at all. Why? Because of... If, if, you, look in the, if you look in the English dictionary, conserve means to keep. Right. It's like if you, it's like 
the easiest example I can use is conservatory. If you have a conservatory, it keeps heat. Does that make sense? No. If you have a conservatory, the conservatory, you have a conservatory to keep heat and to sit in there in the summer. Right. Okay. So conserve, if you go on the Oxford, Ind Oxford English Dictionary, conserve means to keep. Now, um, the reason why that I don't like the, 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 the government at the moment is because um, I don't know if you watched um, a specifically television program over the last few days on a specifically uh, program. Um, well, what program? Uh, GMB. GMB. Good morning, Britain. Oh no, I've I've I, I've I've watched that a couple of times. Um, it's a bit too. Um, it's a bit too stiff in the morning, if you see what I mean. Yeah, but what I it's, don't it's agree very, with... It's very American. It's, yeah, it's, 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 based, it's based it, on it's, an American... It, well, it, I, it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me, that. Um, there's nothing it, wrong with it being American, but I... Didn't, no, I've seen Good Morning America, and and that kind of works. But this is like them trying to do that, and it's it's not working for me. Is that why? Why, why have we brought that into the conversation then? Well, basically, what it is that the that the conservatives and um, nice of um, the conservatives and who nice, which is the national. Which is N I C E, which is a, um, a body that deals with drugs and stuff. Oh right, yes. Um, I've lost a few family members through cancer. Right. And now that the, that that they've released this new breast cancer drug. It was on on Friday morning. Um, and the government and Nice were saying that it was a bit too expensive it was costing ninety thousand pounds ninety thousand pounds for what for for this drug what for a bottle for a bottle of pills for a bottle of pills to prolong a, a lady's life for six months or longer right now the conservatives are dead against this but labor are for it but it's, isn't it the NHS who decides whether or not they will pay out for it? But the NHS are then told by the government that are in. Is it? Yeah, well, it, well obviously, the, the NHS is, is given funding by the current government, which is the Conservative government. I, I think it's the NHS who decides these things, isn't it? But then again, it's it's... Don't they get? Don't, doesn't it work? So they get. The NHS gets so much money, and they have to decide what to do with it. What I what I do like... see what I do see happening is that a lot of the money on the. I mean, I don't know how much is a percentage, but a lot of the money instead of going to people's cancer drugs and to underpaid nurses, goes to these arseholes who are sitting in their offices, plush offices, with great big thick carpets and beautifully decorated wall and walnut furniture in the room, you know, being paid hundreds of thousands of pounds a year when they won't pay £90,000 for a bottle of pills. I agree. I don't so know if you... I, I, I think... Don't know if... I, I, I I'm not sure you're right there. I think they are given an amount of money by whoever's in government, doesn't matter who it is, and then the NHS has to decide how it will use the money. It's a little bit like working in a bar. A little bit like working in a bar. So you've got a manager in the bar, OK? Yeah, he decides what we, happens we to the money. To this, can't we? He decides what happens to the money. Now, should he give the bar staff another 50 pence per hour? Or should he waste the money and spend £800 on an act that no one wants to come and see? 
and I guarantee you he will spend the money on the act and it'll make no difference at all to the pub. But he will always have made the right decision. Arseholes. And I, I, I get fed up seeing arseholes like this. Now, isn't it the same sort of thing? Don't the NHS get given a load of money and they, they have to have to deal with it um, and, and distribute it how they see right? Um, I'm not sure. We've got a couple of messages coming in there, Danny. One second, my darling. Uh, Terry H says, what are you on about? Terry H says, what are you on about? Okay. Uh, 3D Focus says... No, okay. Well, that that's. I'll read your one out in a minute. Three D focus. I just try and for for for, for, a, for a change, Danny. I'm going to try and stick with the subject without going all over the place. <laughs> you know so what you, I'm like. Because you do like because you, you do like to uh, you do like yeah, to go on I, a tangent, Chris. I do. I do know that. I, I'm not so sure it, it does matter who's in government to where the money's being spent on. Um, ben says, nice are an independent body who test new drugs and the drug in question has not had comprehensive testing. So why are they, why are they putting a price I mean, ad admittedly, pounds on it then? Admittedly, Danny, and I'm sure you'd be the same, if you were at... OK, we'll go back to the Ebola thing, right? So there is no cure for this. However... Mm -hmm. There are some drugs that haven't gone through the full testing process that they now want to try out on the people. Now, if you had Ebola, I'm going to tell you now you've got 90% chance of dying tomorrow. Or I can give you this drug, which has had a few tests, but not the correct amount, which may or may not cure you and may even make you worse. What would you do? Well... I'd obviously go on the doctor's, whatever the doctor's prescribed, because obviously the doctor's know better. You'd try it, would you? I would. Yeah, I think I would as well. So going it's, back it's, to... It's, it's like going back to that. It's like just going back to certain situations where it's like um, a HIV drug, isn't it? Yes. There's no cure for HIV. No, but there are, there are now lots of drugs for HIV that have been... Um, tested on people now over the years and that they've got a certain amount that 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 work they, they keep they keep it at bay sort of thing but they're not cheap you know you're looking exactly. at 500 pounds for a bottle of pills and some people are on three or four different types so um some people with hiv they're costing one and a half to two thousand pounds a month to keep them alive in drugs so can you can you understand where where I'm coming from? That if I don't know if you know I don't know if you've lost any any relatives through cancer. Yes. If you've lost anybody through cancer, you'd understand the point that I'm trying to make. I understand. I do completely understand that saying that a drug is too expensive um, as an excuse at £90,000 for a hit um, is is not what you want to hear. On the other hand, you know, if... If, if, you, if, if, if we like always this, just paid what people want all the time... Let's put it like this, OK. Would you give... Say you lost... Say you lost, I don't know... Um, your sister, okay. Yes. So you know, because I know you're very close to your sister. Say you lost your sister through cancer. Would you uh, would you rather pay ninety thousand pounds to keep your sister, or would you rather lose her through nothing? Which would which choice would you go through? Well, I'd I'd pay the money, I suppose. And that's this is the thing that I. Because obviously the breast cancer, it's for breast cancer, so it affects the the, the drug is for breast cancer. It's, it's not yeah, for it's, yeah. I mean, it's 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 not nice, is it? It's not nice. But where is that ninety thousand pound going to come from? 
They've only got so much money. And I'm sure it's not the only drug that they haven't um, bought. Ninety thousand pounds. You know, if if they say if they say, well, ninety thousand pounds for that, and they say okay, so then the drugs company next time it'll be a hundred thousand pounds, and then after that it'll be a hundred, and it just keeps going up. Maybe the reason they said no, one of the reasons is because it's so bloody dear in the first place. Now there is another side to this: drug companies spend an enormous amount of money. Um, getting things tested and tried out. You know, I'm sure for every drug they bring out, you know, there's there's a hundred that don't get any further. And all these have been worked on. But how so, much How much do we, if, you know, you can go into a local shop, a local news agent, a local chemist, and see a, a Cancer Research UK pot. Yes. The money, even if you look onto TV and, and you see a cancer research advert, the amount of money that's put into cancer research that, 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 that us as British public put into it, don't you think that we deserve, as the great British public, the amount of money that we put into it, don't you think that the, the government and NICE give it us back because at the, the moment hit, they're not giving us anything back are they In any hu- opinion, any uh, hit my, my 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 thoughts on this any human any animal who needs any sort of drug for any condition at all if it's available should be given it okay exactly this that's is, my this, opinion this is, on that but this is, this in is the this, point i'm trying to get out in this Why sad, should... in this sad money grabbing world that we live in now, it's just not possible to do that because Why everyone should... wants their be... penny. Why should... Why should there be a price on life? So basically, they're saying you give I us agree. ninety grand. I agree. Or they give it... basically they're saying you give us ninety grand, or you're going to die. Yes, is basically what they're saying. Yes, and I, I've lost many many well my grandfather's side of the family um every one of his brothers and sisters have died from cancer and this is what i'm trying to say if there was the the the, the amount of money that we give to cancer research uk like for walks for life and 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 pots that are in shops and stuff like that this is what really annoys me the fact that we put so much money into it as a British public and it's a it's a it's a charity because when you see the, the adverts on TV give to Cancer Research UK you can donate two pounds a month etc etc why are they not then when they find a cure like they have well not a cure but to prolong somebody's life yeah but you you say that about finding a cure i uh, there there are various conspiracy conspiracy theories um all over the place that think that there are lots of conditions cures have been found for okay but the simple fact is it's cheaper it's 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 more lucrative for drug companies to keep people alive so that they keep having to buy the drugs now, um, why should we? Why why should we support Cancer Research UK if they're nice and they're going to say no, we can't give it yet because it's that much? Why should we? This is the point. This is the argument. Because, because that I give. yeah, because you're why just. Why should we give to Cancer Research UK? And then the amount of, when they do find a when they do find something that's going to prolong somebody's life, and then nice go, no, oh, we can't support it because it's this much amount of money. So why? So we're fighting and losing battle, correct? Or am I just being? Am I just being uh, being idiotic to the point? No, you're not being idiotic at all. You are not being idiotic. Let me tell you that now. You've got your thoughts on something. Anyone who calls in about anything at all is not being idiotic. You're trying to have a conversation, and that's what we do, my darling. All right. Um, uh, ben says. Um, the drug company sets the price, not nice, OK? Um, ben also says, how do the doctors know better? When it's a new drug, the drug companies create the drug, not the doctors. Create, create. 
Nothing is stopping anyone going privately. You know, I mean, if you've got £90,000, go and buy it. That's what Ben's Listen. saying there. Of course, um, I doubt very much how many people, you know, could buy one lot. Let, and then that would only be one lot. You know, okay, then you'd that, have to buy that, another that, one. Well, that's another 90,000. I mean, how many times could anyone do that? Um, my, my granddad's brother, he he um, was admitted to Christie's in Manchester. Uh, or Liverpool, I can't... It's Manchester, I think. Christie's is in Manchester. And um, because, he lived, because he lived in Wales... He wasn't eligible for the drug. What was what what has got what has living in Wales got to do then? I, I don't understand. Because the fact is, if he lived in England, he would be yeah. eligible for the drug. Is that and, and is that something to do with the Welsh Health Authority or whatever that is? How does that work? Yeah, but the fact is, the NHS is overrun by the whole of the government. But it? Uh, and yet in Scotland, the prescriptions are free. So how does that work? So it was in Wales. So is it in Wales. So your prescriptions are free in Wales, but you can't get certain drugs that we can get in England. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So you can get cancer drugs in England. Well, how does that work then? I don't know. This is this this is the oh. argument that, that that I've been arguing for for so long, and my grandfather has lost his brother, his two brothers over cancer. OK, simple simple thing to say to you. Don't think I'm being um, funny or anything when I say that. So you can't get the cancer drug in Wales. How easy would it be to move? But why should a sick person move to England Agreed. to get the drug? Agreed. Why should they move? But if that's how it is, how easy would it be to move? I mean, well, there's, there's an answer. The, the fact is that they'd have to sell the house. How right. long would it take to sell a house? Okay. And they're old age pensioners. So yeah. I wouldn't want to move from here. Could... I wouldn't want to move from here. How long would it take an old age pensioner to get a house from Wales into England? It's like me. My grandparents live in Wrexham, which is very close to England. Mm. Um it's it, it it's very the, the the point I'm trying to make is the fact that a lot of people don't understand how how easy it is for them in England to get cancer treatment. Maybe it's we maybe, maybe we don't maybe we don't realise that you know we can in just Wales, uh, it's a, in Wales it's a lot difficult to get cancer treatment. Is it just cancer treatments or other things as well? It, it's it's obviously we've got we, we've got like um, we've got cancer we've got cancer um, centres. You must have some very good hospitals there, surely. There, there's good hospitals. There's there's Bodder Within, which is in the, on the North West Coast. Um, there's Rex and Myler, which is my local hospital as a shooting yeah. star, um, which is which has been raised. The the shooting star has been raised by people that have put money into it. What's the shooting is, star? What is that? Shooting star is a, is a cancer unit, right? Is, and, and the money for the money that's been put into into shooting star is people that have put money into a pot for it. Right. So we're basically having to put our own money into a pot. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some more comments here from Ben and also Terry. Um, ben says, "You save one person with breast cancer at ninety thousand pounds, or." 150 people with heart trouble. Now, in an ideal world, you'd save all of them. Both of them. Uh, uh, so that's 151, yeah? yeah. But, obviously, as Ben obviously. says, the pot isn't bottomless, you know? I, I, I completely see where you're coming from. He says, oh, um, um, you're mixing charities. Drug companies and governments are all separate. Um Cancer but UK why, is a charity. Should, should, Cancer UK is a charity, not a government body. Um, uh, Cancer UK this. are a research body who discover the possibilities. They do not make the drugs. So yes, you're you're giving money to Cancer UK. Um, okay, I'll tell you. I make a small donation to Cancer UK every month, right? I do, um, but they uh -huh. don't make the drugs. They 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 they. they 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 assist 
they they kind of look at possibilities and then go to the drug companies and say, look, we think you should try this, and then they, they take it further. Ben also says local NHS authorities set their own budgets. Giving free prescription means there's less money for expensive drugs. Yeah, but so well, is the reason that's basically that's basically putting uh, basically putting a price on a life. Correct? There shouldn't be. Yes, no. We we agree on that. We agree on that. There should be no price on life. But that's not the world we live in. Everybody should be able to have the same treatment whether you live in England, Scotland, yes, Wales. Agreed. Northern agreed. Ireland. Look, look. I live in a nice house. I've got spare rooms here. I've got a garden and a garage, right? In my opinion, everyone should have this. I've been able to do this because over the years I've worked, worked and worked and worked and saved and bought and saved and bought. And that, that's how I've done it, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. I actually believe that everyone should have one of these. Yeah. But it's and not exactly fair. It's exactly the same. It's, it's exactly not... the same. If you're diagnosed with cancer, yes, yes, you can obviously, you can obvi- if, if everybody was cured of cancer, there'd be a pop- we, we'd be overpopulated. I understand that. But at the, at the same time, I do think that if you if you had cancer, and the, what I'm trying to get at, the amount of money we put into Cancer Research UK, okay, they've come up with they've come up with this not a cure, but they've come up with this um, drug to prolong your life, okay. So why shouldn't everybody have this drug to prolong your life? Because it's only the, the only the only you can have chemotherapy, et cetera, et cetera, to try and get rid of the cancer that's been available for years. But what I'm trying to say is we've come up with a brand new drug to prolong your life for six months at the most. That's what they're saying, at the most. Cause it, so if you, if you can get drugs that prolong your life for six months for cancer on, on breast cancer, why are they putting a price on it? It's exactly what I'm saying. Why should they say, oh, that's £90,000, thank you. If you've got £90,000, like you said, if I had £90,000 and I had a, a, a relative that had breast cancer, if, if like I'm very close to my mother or my grandmother, if I had £90,000 and they were diagnosed with it, I would give the world, I would give my life to make sure that they would have about six months extra you know, life it's, that I it's, have. It's, it's, it's obviously not the same, but, you know, a couple of times I've had to spend a small fortune on the cat. Mm-hmm. Last time was Christmas 2012. Mm-hmm. I think I ended up spending about £700 on her. Yep. Um, she had to stay in. The vets, I, I call it cat hospital. <laughs> yeah, she had to stay in cat hospital, and I we went to visit her. A couple, hospital, yeah, I illegal. went to visit her a couple of times, and eventually they pulled her around, and I brought her home. And I did a little video that night. It was Christmas Eve, and I stayed here to look after her after she'd come back from cat hospital. And while she was sitting on my lap, Christmas Day, watching the telly, Christmas television. It suddenly occurred to me how lucky she was that I had the money and was able to afford to pay for her to be fixed up. Most people, most wait, most most people, most people would have had to say, "I can't afford it. Put her down." Exactly. And this is so the same. Should, this is the same thing. This is the same so why, thing. Why the point is, you? the point is, you know, where, where, you know, where, where would the extra money go? I've got to read these comments because we're running out of time now, um, uh, Danny. Um, it says in the US, except for Obamacare, no one gets free medical care except for charity or mercy hospitals. Ben Parker also says prolong life or extend suffering sometimes, you know, although I'm not saying that 
the person would be suffering yet um and terry h writes on everyone has personal circumstances that they believe the government should pay for certain drugs quite simply the nhs can't afford it um it's not the fact, it's not the fact they can't afford it it's because but, they, but it's, they can't they can't afford it they can't afford it how many ninety thousand pounds you 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 say ninety thousand pounds okay for this drug Fair enough. But how many £90,000 would they have to find? So that's only like 12 treatment. It's 90, uh, what, what's 10,010? 10, um, it, it's not a lot of treatments before you get up to a million, is it? Is that 100 treatments, 90,000? Yeah, probably. Do you see what I mean? You know, so they, they, they don't look at it as... Well, you can have it and you can't. You can have it, you can't. You know, it, they say, right, that drug's too expensive. We're not providing it. I agree with you. Everyone in the world should have whatever it takes to keep them alive. But it's just never, ever going to be like that. And um, I think, I, 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 you know, I'm sure whatever government was in there would, would have... Would have I, I don't think it is down... It's not down to them. It's down to the NHS. It's down to the NHS. Okay, thank you, Chris. All right. All right, thank you very much. Nice to talk to you, sir. Take care. Bye bye now. Bye, Danny. Bye bye. There are Danny. I mean, I can understand completely what he's saying there. I really can. Um, hello to 3D Focus, who says, Hi, Chris. Good to see you on the web waves. I always watch your show when you're doing the weekly kitchen cleanup. I was actually looking through some of your old videos. Is that wise? Look, what, when I was young. Um, and was wondering if you ever missed the days of DJing in techno house clubs, or are you going to be out of that? Oh, I'd like to do house again, but I don't think I'll ever be asked to do that again. I used to be an avid clubber, but at 35, the thought of staying up till 10 in the morning fills me with dread these days. Oh, I used to stay up till tw 1 in the afternoon. We used to go to this place, trade at Turnmills, and we'd be there all night until 1 in the afternoon. I know I'm getting old, when I got excited the other day that my delivery from Wittard's arrived. Oh, that's the tea place, isn't it? I now make tea with loose tea from clubbing to tea making. Have a good trip uh, into town there. That's from Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Nice to hear from you. Um, OK, uh, and um, Ben says 12, 12 treatments would equal £1 million. You see, that's only 12 people. And we know, you know, there's, there's just so many more people with... Um, cancer in so many different forms of it that need to be treated and it's just oh i don't know i don't know you know you do and you you hear these conspiracy theories all the time and you think to yourself sometimes um is this you know is someone releasing something into the air or water to give people cancer I personally believe so i think a lot of it's to do with all this drugs and that's that, that's injected into animals you know, and then you eat them. And that, that's what I think. Uh, OK, we got uh, running out of time now, boys and girls. I've got a little video here that uh, lovely Marge has sent in. Now, Marge lost her mother recently. And she's taken a little video in a garden. The only thing is, Marge, you've taken it um, upright. Next time you do a video, can you do it sideways and we can get more of it in? So have a little look at this uh, uh, before we disappear today. OK, my darling? One second. I just, how am I going to do that? Right, do this. Okay, this is Mama's garden. Mama passed away July 31st, 4 p.m., 2014. Her garden is not the most organized, but she loved flowers. I don't know what these are. They're just, I think they're petunias. Maybe Chris can know what they are. I don't know what this is either. I'm, some of them got a little underwatered and some of them get overwatered <laughs> my, my gardening skills I'm not really going to talk a lot because I don't it's been such a rough week I'm kind of exhausted this, uh, well I guess I can kind of talk uh, Rose is sure and I, no it ain't what is that what is that I don't know 
I've got so many things to do, so I'll just kind of be rushed. A little messy in places. Uh, what do you say? I don't know. I don't know. Another, I know where Rose is. Mom's buried right over there. We put her ashes with, with where her dog died years ago. I put a little cover there for her. She likes that dancing Indian and her uh, elephant ears. That's Mama's ashes. And then we've got, oh, Mama's kind of a wild person. Like I said, not Oregon as, but she, that's her business. I don't know what this is either. Another plant in her Martin houses. And uh, more roses and bushes. We got dogs that barking. <laughs> got this one strange tree that looks like a, I don't know, it's a strange tree, but it's fast growing. It's a fast growing tree. I think it got overwatered. It's kind of looking a little puny. I don't know. I'll learn as I go. And whatever that is. <laughs> uh, she's just got so much stuff out here. Little things she put in this here. I guess. I recognize what this stuff is and I'll make it and figure out how to take care of it. And then here we got my silly brother. Huh? He broke the aloe vera plant and he put part of it in here and I gotta get it out of there. It's in here with the strawberries. I think it's strawberries. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh shit. A little windy today. It's nice and cool. That whatever that was, I think it died. Now, whatever this is, I have no idea. It's growing. Of course, the bird bath and a little bit of wildness. Mama's got a tomato plant. I'm the, having to help keep clean up everything. She, she even keeps weeds that look pretty. <laughs> this is a weed. But it's a pretty plant. It's a weed. It's got a beautiful color on its leaves. I don't know. I guess what the heck is that? I guess that's a gourd or something taking over. And uh, mom even has me keep the grain. We put out grain for the birds. She told me not to mow this because we're it's gonna turn to grain. Uh whatever kind of grain it is. So I didn't mow it. We put down gravel because it's ground it's so wet, it gets muddy up here. And young trees we planted. Oh, fell in a hole. Ouch! I just fell in a hole. <laughs> me and my motorcycle. Another tree, it needs a lot of work. Anyway, I'd say it, uh, my mama's garden, and she's, she's laid the rest there in her garden, which is the wildest she was wild. <laughs> I love you, Mom. Bye, you guys. Yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? A little uh, video there from uh, uh, Marge. Um, showing you the garden there. Marge, I must say, uh, a little bit trouble with the sound there. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Um, I quite like the idea of the tyre there. Did you see she's used she's used and, and painted an old tyre and used that as a plant pot, which is which is great. And aloe vera. Now, um, I rescued, uh, Ronnie rescued an aloe vera plant yesterday from uh, the house which was almost dead but had one green leaf on it so he's trying to get that going again is that how you take cuttings from aloe vera you take off a, one leaf and plant it into a pot of soil which is uh, quite interesting, I must say. Anyway, uh, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me. If you'd like to send in an email, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Okay, chris at united... I can't find my bits and pieces here. There we are. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There's a daily short video, Monday to Friday, and you can find those at, again, the same place, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Okay. All right, you have a nice Saturday. See you soon. Bye-bye now.